Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Welcome to your next session of your social science children. We have been already seeing about the creation of an empire that is the Mughal empire we have been seeing and in that we have been seeing about Akbar right. So we have seen about the conquest made by Akbar the various places he captured and then we have seen about the Rajput policy. What is that Rajput policy? He wanted to maintain a very good relationship with this Rajput kings. So he uh, created the tie of marriage relationship and in that I have told you that he married a princess called Jodhabhai. Yes, we have seen about that and then we have seen about the religious tolerance. So, he wanted everyone to follow their own religion and he he founded a new religion called as din e ilahi Yes, you remember? Then we have seen about the administration of Akbar. Yes, he had a very good control over the places where he ruled and then we have seen about the central administration which means the centralized administration in which he had a cabinet of ministers and six of them we have seen about all these. So, this is what we have seen in our previous session. So, now again we are going to continue with Akbar today. Yes, so first we will see about the administration of land revenue. So, we have seen about various types of administration. First, we have seen what was the structure of administration and then we have seen about how, how it was centralized and now we are going to see about the administration of land revenue. So, we are repeatedly seeing that Akbar was a very brilliant, very shrewd leader, very good emperor. Okay? So, he was very much loyal to his people, he was very much following the practice of justice. right? So, we will see the system of land revenue was completely reformed by Akbar and his Divan Todar Mal. Okay? Todar Mal was the Divan of Akbar. What is meant by Divan? You remember this word? Divan? Yes. Finance and Revenue Minister. So, he was the Finance and Revenue Minister for Akbar. Okay, so, Akbar, he completely reformed the system of land revenue. What is meant by reformed? He changed the entire practice. Previously, however it was, he changed it completely to a new way that is called as reformed. Okay, so here he introduced the Shala system as it came to be called which was based on the reforms initiated by Sher Shah Suri. So, he changed all the previous uh, land revenue system and he introduced Dashala system. So, now we are going to see what is that Dashala system. Okay? The land revenue was fixed considering the average produce of the land. So, however the grains have been grown. Okay? So, whatever was the output based on that. right? And then the average price of the different crops for the last 10 years. So, they took the average of all these. That is, they took the average produce of the land and then they took the uh, average price of a particular grain. So, all these were taken into consideration for an average period of 10 years. Okay? So, after calculating this only, the tax was imposed. The land revenue was imposed on the landlords. Okay? So, here thus means 10 years. You know in Hindi, you would have read no thus. Yes, thus means 10. So, that is how this calculation was made. So, average of 10 years was considered for an landlord and the quality of land was also considered while fixing the revenue. So, while fixing this is going to be the amount you have to pay, they also considered the quality of the land. right? So, while con considering all these things, okay, the government ca uh, took, that is they collected the revenue of one third of the average yield. So, for the average yield, whatever it was, one third of that only was collected as uh, revenue and they also granted concessions if the crops failed, which means the if there would be many reasons that the crops would not have grown. Maybe it would have, maybe that would be an year of flood 
or famine. Yes, famine is nothing but scarcity. Flood is, we all know what is flood, right? More water when it comes because of rain. So, they would have not grown any crops in a particular year. So, if that is the case, concession was given to the, that people. So, these reforms greatly eased the burdens of the farmer. So, previously uh, in our uh, Delhi Sultanate, I uh, hope you all remember the taxation of Dob in that Muhammad bin Tughlaq imposed a very high amount of tax, right? So, people left their agricultural lands and they went away, right? You remember that? Yes, but Akbar, see he was quite completely opposite, right? So, if there was no crop growth in that particular year, he gave them the concession. Yes, you need not pay this amount, maybe a lesser amount. So, like that, he was very much comfortable, uh, comforting the people, okay. So, the farmer's burden was very much reduced while Akbar was on rule. So, now we are going to see about provincial administration. So, what is it? It is all about the places how it was divided, okay. So, the entire empire, a very big empire was divided into small parts and that is what we call it as province, okay. So, the Mughal empire was divided into provinces called subas, okay. So, we call that province as subas and each suba was headed by a governor or subedar. Okay, so, a person who takes care of a particular province will become a governor of that province or subedar. Okay, so, we call him either governor or subedar. So, that province is called as subas and that subas head is subedar, right? And the subedar was responsible for the people's welfare and the upkeep of the army. So, in that particular province, people should be well. That has to be taken care by this subedar. And also army in that particular area should be very well maintained by this subedar. So, that was a very, uh, that is how he divided the places and he could have a good control over the places. And this subedar was aided by other officers such as Faujdar, the military commander, then Kotwal, police officer and sadar. So, here aided means helped. Okay, so this Subedar was a governor and he had a group of people under him who were helping him in this administrative work. They are Faujdar who was the military commander, then Kotwal who was a police officer and then the sadar. Okay, sadar. So, the Subas were divided into sarkars which were district. So, Subas was a big area. Again, that was divided into smaller areas which was called as Sarkars. Okay? So, this Sarkar is nothing but district. So, this district was again divided into uh, small areas. We will see that before that. This Sarkar was managed by Fojdars. Right, these Faujdas, uh, we have just seen that they are military commanders. So, they were also uh, responsible for maintaining law and order, okay. And then Amalguzars, so they were the supervisors of revenue collection. So, all the revenues has to be collected properly for the welfare of the state. Again, that is going to be used for people only. So, Amalguzars was the were the group of people who were responsible for collecting the revenue and then Faujdar was a military commander as well as he has to maintain the law and order. So, Sarkar was managed by these two people. So, Subedar, sub, under Subedar there came Faujdars and Amalguzars. Then this Sarkar consisted a number of Parganas. This is what I told you. Subas was divided into Sarkars and Sarkars was again divided into Parganas. Okay? Pargana is nothing but several villages put together. Okay? The Parganas were made up of several villages. So, this is how Akbar made the control over the places easy. So, he could rule from the one place and under him he had many Subedars and under each Subedar there were Faujdas and Amalguzas and again that was divided into smaller villages. So, like this, everyone has to report to their higher 
uh, authority. So that is how he made the administration easier. And now we are going to see something new which is called as Mansabdari system, right? So to make the civil and military system more efficient, Akbar introduced Mansabdari system. So he maintained a very good military system. Okay, military system was very good under Akbar's rule. So for that, he took very uh, unique steps and very different steps such that it will be maintained in a proper way. So the first thing is the Arabic word mansab means rank. So mansabdari system is nothing but the people were given position in military based on rank. Okay, the rank they hold it in the rank they held in military. That is how they were classified into various positions. Okay, So, it indicated the rank or position of an officer in the Mughal administrative hierarchy. Hierarchy is nothing but the order under which they were working. So, now, just now we have seen in provincial administration, Subedas. Next to them comes, next to there comes Amalguzas and then again Pargana. So, this order, this is what we call it as hierarchy. Okay, so this rank was the position which was given to the officers in the Mughal Empire. Okay, so people were given positions based on their rank. So under this system, each Mansabdar has two rankings. So each and every Mansabdar has two rankings. How? One was based on his personal status and the other one was based on how well he had maintained the army. Okay, so now we are going to see that one was based on his personal status and that was called as Zat. Okay, and the other one was based on the number of soldiers and horses he maintained for the empire service and that was called as Savar. Okay, so Zat and Savar. So his personal status gives him one rank and the other one is based on the number of soldiers and the army he maintains, horses he maintains. Okay, So, he, every uh, Mansabdar had a separate group of soldiers, same way he had, they had a group of army, sorry, horses. Okay, So, based on that number, he was again given a rank and which was called as Savar. So, now, the lowest rank was 10 while the highest ranged between 5000 to 10,000. So the ranks were up to 10,000 and the lowest rank was 10th rank. The Mansabdas were paid in the form of land grants which was called as Jagirs. So instead of giving them money, a Mansabdar who maintains a very good army of soldiers as well as horses, horses they were paid in the form of land. Okay, So, however, the Jagir belonged to the state. So, anyway, the Jagir belongs to the empire only, but it will be given to them for a particular period so that they will enjoy the benefits from that land. Okay, So, now what happens when a Mansabdar dies? Okay, The Jagir will come back to the empire and these Mansabdas were required to bring, yes, so Mansabdar when he dies, the Jagir will go back to the empire and these Mansabdas, what was their duty, you know, they have to take care of all the army people and the horses which were under their control. So, they have to take these army people as well as the horses to regular inspection to the emperor. Emperor will periodically check, okay. So, the Mansabdas were required to bring their horses and soldiers to the emperors for inspection at regular intervals. So, again, so the chances of fraudulent activities were there, which means, see, for example, if one Mansabdar is not maintaining his horses or army people well, the chances are there that he may take some other army uh, people as well as horses from some other army. He will go and show it and he will get a good name. Yes, the chances are there. So what he, what Akbar did, you know, he did, he branded the horses and prepared rolls with the description of men. So he tied uh, the, around the neck of the horses with a roll. 
with the name of the men. So, he cannot make anything, that is he cannot change anything. Okay. So, this system was called as, so naming a horse or branding a horse is called as Dagwa Chera. Okay. Dagwa Chera. So, this is how Akbar maintained his army as well as the military forces by encouraging with various activities and he was very much vigilant and he was properly checking the army and these steps he took. What are all the steps he have taken? He wanted to maintain a good relationship with Rajputs. He wanted to have a very good policy of religious tolerance and a very sound system of administration. Sound system is nothing but a very good effective system of administration and all these put in place that have ensured that Akbar is remembered even today as one of the greatest kings to rule India. So, all these effective systems introduced by Akbar have given us that even today we remember Akbar. Right. So, with this I am ending this session children. See you soon in the next session with another set of topics in the same lesson. Thank you. Shri Gurubhyo Namaha.